มาคมทุนเทียนมนุษย์กัมพูชีเอ็กอ่อนเอซีชีแคลงไปเชียปดอลจอมแดงดังUm, Mr. Richard Archer, the managing director, partner at the Archer um, Bahari, and the topic of his presentation is managing employee engagement. Please welcome him. Right, let's work out how to use this thing first without my glasses on. Is that the right button? It is. Okay. Um, If you're expecting the white man to give you the answers to HR, it's not going to happen. Because, to be honest, there is no one single answer to HR. The answer is sitting there, and that's you guys. You are the answer to human resources. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to give you some tips, and I'm going to talk on. A very interesting subject of where's my where is it where is it? If I keep clicking, ah, love. Ooh, you are expecting something different. So, who in this room is in love? Put your hands up. If you're in love, put your hands up. Okay, keep them up. Keep them up. I never said put them down. Come on. So if you're in love, let's see. Come on, we want to see those hands of people that are in love. Okay, now keep them up if you love your job. Ooh, I'm actually one of those people. Okay, now put your hand down if you're sat next to your boss and you're lying. Okay. So, love of performing in the workplace, or better known as, oh, I hate this thing, employee engagement, because it's exactly the same thing. To have really strong employee engagement in an organisation, your employees need to love what they do. Straightforward and simple. It's a direct relationship. If you fall out of love, what happens? You get divorced. You find another wife. Exactly the same in employment. If you fall out of love with your job, you find another job. So, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to employ engagement is a pretty new thing in Asia. So I'm going to show you some facts and figures of just how important it is before I go into some other areas of of how to look at it. And I still hate this thing. In many recent surveys, and this is global, and it actually really does strongly apply to Asia. On average, 63%. That's more than half of your workforce. Disengaged and unhappy with their current job. Ooh, that's bad news. So, let's break that up a bit further. Only ten point eight percent of your workforce are very satisfied with their job. And if you're sitting there saying, as a CEO or a business owner, "Oh, this doesn't apply to me," then I'm afraid you don't know your business, and you're not close enough to your business because this is true. So, 10.8 percent of your business is product- very productive. Those are people that are really engaged and are helping your brand and are driving your customers and are driving your quality. Which button do I press for the? Le- oh, that one. Um, 25.9 percent are just satisfied, so they're kind of productive. 31.6 percent of your business just goes to work to do their job. 
That is a really disengaged workforce. Somebody's yawning down there. He still hasn't woken up from his young lunch. 25.1% um, are dissatisfied, which means they're 75% unproductive. And 10.1% are very dissatisfied. That means one in 10 of your workers is less than 10% productive. This is how important employee engagement is. So if you've got issues with retention, low quality levels, poor morale, um, there's, there's loads of areas, can't attract the right people, et cetera, et cetera. Employee engagement is actually the key to it. Lots of companies talk about employee retention and all come onto that in a second. But if you look at employee engagement first, you don't actually need to do employee retention. So let's look at some more figures. So what does this mean for your business? So if you're in HR and your boss turns around to you and says, okay, how much can employee engagement add to my business? Using the actual figures that we've, from surveys, just used, for every $1 million you spend on payroll, 475000 is unproductive. You're wasting nearly 50% of your payroll because your employees are not engaged. Are you starting to understand now why employee engagement is becoming so important around the world? And actually, in the recent LinkedIn survey this year that was released on Asian trends, employee engagement is number two for companies to focus on in Southeast Asia. Number one is employer branding. Not about retention, not about recruitment, not about rewards and compensation. Employer branding and employee engagement. That's quite a shocking figure. And I still can't use this thing. So why is it? Why are your uh, employees dissatisfied or underperforming? Low morale. One of the things that I see a lot of when I go around talking to companies and, and working with organizations on employee engagement is that the leadership don't understand where employee engagement starts. Employee engagement starts from the top. And this goes for a, a big organization or a small family-run business or a government or a country. The behavior at the top is reflected down through the business. So if there's a low morale at the top and the management don't get it, then the employees won't get it. No career path. A lot of reasons, one of the big reasons why people leave organizations and, and have low employee engagement. Lack of recognition. One of the things I learned when I first came to Asia is that in a lot of cultures, People don't say thank you when you achieve something. Uh, does, is anybody finding that here? Is it the same in Cambodia? You're just, nobody comes to you and says thank you for doing an amazing job. It's just taken for granted that you're given a salary. You do what you're told to do. That's not employee engagement. Poor employee management relationships. This is one of the things that's come up several times today, is that people leave companies and jobs because of their leadership. Weak corporate communication. It's actually the single most important thing with employee engagement is communication. 
any company who is taking employee engagement seriously has to have a goal and a vision. And it can be anything, absolutely anything. Can anybody tell me, apart from Clevin that works for me, what the vision of Apple is? Anybody? Come on, it's the world's biggest company next to Coca-Cola and Villa's left, so I can say they're number three now. Um, it's the world's biggest company. What's Apple's vision and goal? Anybody know? Anybody guess? I can see loads of iPhones, but I can't see anybody with a hand up. No? Okay, it's simple. It's to enhance every life that they touch. That's it. That's all they want to do as a company. So every employee going into Apple knows that they're there to help a company enhance every life that they touch. If you look at Samsung, their goal, is there anybody from Samsung here? Well, good. Um, <laughs> their goal is to be number one in every market. Which one is the world's biggest company? So there are many other reasons that we've identified as having a negative impact on employee engagement and performance. I have no idea what's coming next. Okay, disengaged in employees results in a high staff turnover. Do you know the true cost of a vacancy in your company? It's far cheaper to do employee engagement activities and work out how much, what your employee engagement ratio is, and yes, you can measure it, than it is to actually replace one person. The true cost of a vacancy of losing somebody because they're disengaged are unserviced and dissatisfied customers. Reduced production capabilities. Missed sales opportunities. Damaged reputation, or poor employer branding because it goes even further than that. Overstretched workforce resulting in a shrinking morale. Drastic reduction in quality levels. Valuable leadership resources spent on recruitment. If I've, I know some quite senior CEOs around Southeast Asia. Um, and one of the conversations I have with, with many of them is on recruitment and attraction of people and how they spend their time. Believe it or not, a lot of CEOs of big, powerful companies spend 70% of their time doing recruitment. When they should be out there leading the strategy of the business, when they should be out there helping the rest of the organization to grow. But they're not. They're spending 70% of their time on recruitment, which is wasting a lot of time. So this is a game why employee engagement is so important. It frees up the time of the people that have other jobs to do. And you end up a high turnover over of staff creates a low brand value. Do you understand what a low brand value is? I'll use the analogy chess that I used, Apple and Samsung. Apple has a very high brand value. Its goods are high level, they're better quality, and they're more expensive. They have a higher brand value. Samsung, because they have a different goal and vision, their brand value is less. So the more engaged your employees, the higher your brand value because your customers are of a higher value. Okay, in financial terms then. If you lose a mid-level manager, 
the cost of replacing that one person is from $270,000. Okay, and I know these salaries are quite high for Cambodia, but this is a regional level. So it's 150% of the annual salary. If you've, got an, if you've invested in an experienced and specialized leader, it costs 400% of their annual salary to replace them in lost business, in retraining, in all areas connected with, with that person's role. That's a lot of money. So again, this is why employee engagement is so important. When co employees do not believe in your company, how do your customers view your company? Your employees are your company. They represent your business. They are out there every day selling your brand. If they don't like your brand, your customers won't like your brand. And you lose custom because of it. Your employee is your organization. It's really important how much emphasis we've got to put into this. Without your employees, your organization does not function. It is the, your most valuable asset. And I'm a strong believer that actually HR is the most important department in that company. Because without a strategic HR department or business partnering, as Richard earlier put it, the company doesn't grow, it doesn't develop, it doesn't meet its targets. So HR is, in my opinion, the most important department in the company. So your employee behavior affects your distributors, it affects your customers, it affects your brand image, and it should affect your suppliers. If you can get your employee behavior correct and engaged in the organization, everything moves smoothly, and everything moves at the same speed, and things progress. Do you know where your company is on the employee engagement scale? Yes, it can be measured. It's called the employee engagement ratio. And you can measure it. And it's, it's done through surveying your staff and seeing how, how their reaction is to certain questions in the way that your business operates. But just to give you some perspective, if you have a poor engagement level, the performance of your business is only about 25%. Average performance level, sorry, average engagement level, you're hitting about 40% efficiency. These are true figures. If you've got a very good engagement level, which means everybody believes in your business, everybody knows what they're supposed to do, everybody's passionate about what your organization does, then you've got very good and you're looking at just over 80% performance. So employee engagement, this is why companies are now taking employee engagement so seriously. So the bad news, 68% of employees do not know how their work affects the growth of the company. Communication. 48% of all middle managers, including those of you in this room, are either currently looking or planning to look for another job. Oh, there's a few giggles there. That means there's a few people on interview at the moment. Um, <laughs> 70% of managers are shocked when top staff resign. 
Why are you shocked? If you've done nothing to engage your workforce or even try and investigate why your workforce are, are disengaged or how engaged they are, why are you surprised when they go and leave and work for somebody else? 94% of employee turnover is totally preventable by using proactive employee engagement strategies. Now, when Villa was talking earlier from Coca-Cola, he said that the ideal level for staff turnover is around 5%, and that's about correct, because you've got to have fresh blood coming through. So if you look at that, it's, it's about right. 6% dips, 5%, 6%. So you can actually, by engaging your workforce, proactively really cut your employee turnover. So, now the answer to your question. What is employee engagement? An engaged employee understands what to do to help their company succeed. They feel emotionally connected to the organization and its leaders. Big word, they're emotional and are willing to put that knowledge and emotion into action to perf improve performance, both their own and the organization's. Employee engagement is an emotion. Somebody, your staff have to be emotionally attached to their job. To do that, they need to understand their job. They need to know where they fit into the company. So, employee engagement is not the same as employee satisfaction. Totally different. Oh, I still hate this thing. Satisfied employees are happy or content with their jobs and the status quo, so they just go to work. For some, this might involve doing enough just to get the job done. So if we go back to that chart I showed you earlier with the five streams on it, they're the middle one or lower because they just go to work to earn a salary, that's it. How are they helping your business to develop? How are they helping you to achieve? Employee retention are effects organizations take to ensure employees stay with them regardless whether they are happy or satisfied with their roles. This is the big mistake companies make, is that they think employee retention and employee engagement are the same thing. They're not. Employee retention is to stop people leaving. Employee engagement is to increase the level of performance of your business. Covers basic concerns and needs of employees, a bonus, company trips, change of job title, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Keep them satisfied. Just, just call him, I don't know, a senior director instead of director. He'll be happy, he'll stay another year does not address the employee's level of motivation or involvement. Employee enga engaged employees are motivated to do more, to, do, to exceed customers' expectations, assist the company in achieving its goals, and take pride in their achievements. That's the big one. You can always tell an engaged employee by the level of pride when they achieve something. Another way to do it, as I've suggested to other people in the past, to CEOs, is in the morning when all your staff are coming to work, and you can do this as HR leaders, sit in your reception and watch people come in as they arrive for work. Just sit somewhere in the corner. If your employees come in lively, they come in before nine o'clock, and they're chatty, and they're, they're vibrant, and they're, they're getting in there, then you've got to be doing something right. 
if all of your 1,000 workforce walk in at one minute to nine, unhappy, not smiling, miserable, you've got a problem. It's a very easy way to look at it and to start seeing just if you have an employee engagement issue or not. So to start finishing off then, there are different levels of employee. So you've got the informed employee. This is somebody who is aware of the company goals and vision. And they have a purpose. Okay? So that's just somebody that's informed. So that could be somebody on a production line that's filleting chicken. They know that their company sells chicken and they have a purpose. They're there to take the meat off the boat. Is that an engaged employee? You have involved employees. So these are people that participate in initiatives and activities and support the employee value proposition. So they're a bit more engaged. They're a bit more involved. They support the company in what it does, but do they actually drive the company's values? Finally, you have an engaged employee. These are people that optimize performance. Engage customers. Brings broke. <laughs> brings growth and increases profits, promotes the organization as an employer of choice. Very handy when it comes to recruitment. Because if you're an employer of choice, people want to work for you and they will come to you rather than you having to spend loads of money on attracting them. So those different levels of employee. So employee engagement, what it's not, in conclusion, it's not about material things, benefits and compensation. It's not about having the best of every amenity. It's not about avoiding making tough decisions. It's not about pleasing people all of the time. There's one thing you learn very quickly as a manager, you can't make everybody happy all of the time. You've always got to upset somebody. And in, to succeed as a HR person, you can't make everybody happy all of the time. Especially in employee engagement, there's always going to be somebody that's unhappy with it. It's a catchphrase for the entire organization. Companies that just say we do employee engagement but don't practice it, it's just a catchphrase. So what it is, is how we treat people and relate to them. So it's how we treat our workforce, how we recognize them, how we involve them in the decision-making process of the business. Shared responsibility for creating a future together. This comes down to the vision. Remember what I said about Apple's vision is to enhance the life of, of every person they touch. That's it. So everybody in their organization knows what they're aiming for. Every product they design is about enhancing a life. And those of you that use Apple, I'm sure you understand what I'm talking about. So future business success and work environment. Being clear and aligned on purposes and goals. Your whole organization is communicated with. Everybody from day one is told, this is what our goal is. This is what our vision is. This is what your job is. This is what, your what we expect from you. And this is where you fit into the company. They know what they've got to deliver. Recent issue I've had with one company is that they're a startup coming from America into Asia. And being a startup, everybody mucks in, everybody gets involved, does a bit of everything. 
But suddenly resignations have started after two years. And the reason was because people's jobs had changed and there hadn't been any clarity put into place as to exactly whose role was what anymore. So people were looking to leave. So if you've got a company where people don't understand their job or know what their job is or there's a crossover, you will have disengaged employees. It's continuous communications. Another example, I was working with a Cambodian company at the moment, and they had a big issue because there was a rumor started to get out in their business that there was an issue with something. I can't disclose because it's, it's too confidential. But they came to me and said, we're worried. People are starting to talk about leaving. We're hearing about other people uh, starting to interview our employees, et cetera, et cetera. So I said, well, okay, what's the good news about the business? Why, why are they hearing this? So they told me. We talked through it, and we gave it a positive spin in the fact that actually what was going on in the business was something very positive. So they took it back out, they communicated with the employees, and now their business is already 10% up on where it was two months ago. And there's opportunities for performers and staff development. I'm going to quickly flick through the last, how long have I got left? Okay, thank you. Um, so the key drivers of engagement, these are the important things you need to look at to get an engaged workforce. Credible leadership. Your leadership really do need to lead to have an engaged workforce. Supportive co-workers. If people have got to work as a team and deliver as a team, then they've got to support each other as a team. If it's not teamwork, it's not going to happen. Job satisfaction. Job satisfaction comes from people knowing how they contribute to the business or the organization. What are the end results? Go what, what effect does their job have on the company? Fluent corporate communications, recognition. There's a very good friend of mine called Scott Friedman, who is an American speaker. I don't know if any of you have heard of him. He's, he's a big believer in celebrating success in the workplace. And at every stage of the day, every time your people succeed or do something that has um, out of the ordinary, or they've had a success. Celebrate it in whatever way possible. All get together and shake hands or say a big hurrah. If it's a big success, go and buy some donuts or something. But celebrate success in the simplest way possible. Trust and integrity. Pride about the company. Relationship with managers and compensation and benefits. Compensation and benefits comes a long way down the list of employee engagement drivers. In a lot of lists, if you look at the US, et cetera, it doesn't actually, a lot of the time, appear. People are more interested in other things to keep them engaged at work than they are just about rewards and compensation. So what does this mean for your business? An engaged workforce is an effective route for increasing your profits. If you cultivate innovation, if you engage your employees, and you have a strong corporate culture, you will get a five, at, at, for every 5% increase in employee engagement, you will get a minimum of a 0.7% increase in operating margin. For those of you that are financially inclined, you will realize that that is a huge sum of money. 
for every 5% increase in employee engagement ratio, you'll get an extra 0.7% operating margin. Okay, the last slide you'll be pleased to know. So there isn't one solution for everybody when it comes to employees. The re employee engagement, the reason why is that every human being is different. Every organization is different. So there is no one solution fits all. But there is a method to finding it out. And it's exactly the same as when you are ill. And this is what it is. Your business has an illness. So what do you do when you're sick? You go to the doctor. He sticks a th thermometer somewhere, and he gives you a diagnosis. He tells you what's wrong. And you do exactly the same with employee engagement. You have to look at where the sickness is. What is the sickness? What's causing it? Then you have to do an analysis. Same as the doctor. Sometimes he has to send your blood away for a blood test. You get the results back, you know what's wrong. So it's exactly the same with this. Employee engagement, you do the diagnosis, then you analyze the results and look at where from your, the circle we did earlier of key employment, key employee engagement drivers, where your weaknesses are, where you need to start focusing on. Then you've got to draw a strategy. So how are you going to deal with your sickness? Or to relate it back to the doctor situation, what is your medication going to be? What are you going to prescribe as your cure? And finally, you need to ta start taking your medicine. You need to implement your strategies. Some of these strategies can happen quite quickly and have an effect quite quickly. Some of them you have to keep going and take two or three years. And you have to keep measuring it. You have to keep going back to the doctor and doing that diagnosis again just to find out and keep constant monitoring of whether your strategy is being effective. And I think that's my last slide. So thank you very much for, for listening to me. Uh, it's been a pleasure. Thank you very much, Mr. Chani, for your very fun and energetic energizer. Okay.